as we've been saying in the previous lectures, um, the idea of the lecture series is to be able to present concepts, to present work, the current work that we are engaged in, and to and to begin discussions. So the whole the whole the whole reason for the lecture series is for you students or for our guests to enter a debate. This is why we're doing it, and I would really love it if we could do this. more important to uh, reduce the waste that we produce every day than to think about the waste we, we, we are producing in general? Wouldn't it be like better to reduce the waste than to think about the way to reuse the waste? Yes, I, I, what, what I was trying to say is that in the, by giving you these three models or these three points of view, the systemic approach, the first of the three things, its approach was to try to reduce, like to think of where is waste produced, how it is produced, and what I can do to reduce it, which is, which is one approach. But we have to accept also that waste is inevitable. So what do we do with the rest of it? The one that we could not reduce, the one that we could not, the one that we are going to be left with. What we can do, we can, we, we can reduce it even further if we find a way to turn it into something that is not waste. And in order to do that, what I was trying to say is that we have to not pretend that it is not our responsibility or and it's not an ethical kind of thing. It is a, that it is, it is ours basically. We own it and we can do something with it. Problem. Um, yes. <laughs> recycling, it's one. It's a part of the solution. And do you think using uh, the gaming e economy or the gaming uh, behavior to um, change the way people think of recycling could help uh, to solve this problem? I want to clarify. There is something about the, there is something about the discussion which makes me nervous, which is the the ethical part of it. Because, because of the, it's a problem we need to solve it and so on. I don't know what's going to happen with that solution. Uh, what I was trying to what I was trying to say is that in waste there are opportunities because there are things that we fail to see just because we don't understand that this is something that we own and this is something that is has to be there in one way or another and and we just pretend it never happened, like the French. And if we act a little bit more like the Germans, which I'm not supposed to be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, 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 the people who do it in the forest, that's what I meant, then we, then we have a better chance at dealing with the, the recycling as an issue. Yes. So the idea of decentralizing, which was the second approach, to, de to decentralize recycling, is, a, I believe, a very prominent one. If it becomes, if, if, if you're not doing it because you're good, but you're doing it because you want to, for some very specific necessity, reason, I think you promote uh, recycling in a much more healthy way. Why don't we create a country waste, like in Africa, for example? I mean. All the waste yes. goes. It, it's already done. It's yes, yeah. I know. So why one country gets all the waste and uh, uh, gets a, a new economy with it? It depends on. Um, it depends on what you. Uh, if you want, do you want to be that country? That's the question to ask. It's like it's a matter of it's a matter of who's going to decide which country is going to be that country that is responsible for the leftovers of the other country who, which was in a better situation to not be 
the original country. That I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to discuss this as if there is no policy making based on some sort of hierarchy: who is in power, who is not in power, and so on. 